South Africans have been left um, wondering whether this investment that they've made in promoting an accountable police has, has come to naught. Just an increasing number of people skeptical as to kind of the honesty and um, ability of the police to, to deliver safety. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. Freedomsphoenix.com My name is Sean Tate and I'm working for an organization called the African Policing Civilian Oversight Forum. It's a network of uh, oversight practitioners uh, drawn from states, so the state-sponsored oversight mechanisms like here in South Africa, the Independent Police Complaints Directorate, uh, civil society, organizations that are involved in and promoting accountability and in this instance particularly police accountability and academia. So we work in three basic spheres. Uh, the first is to, as I said, advocate for uh, improvements in police accountability, to establish them where they don't exist, um, to provide technical support uh, to institutions engaged in the business of police oversight. So what do we monitor, how do we monitor, what skills we need, uh, how do we draw on the research that is out there both African and international and then promoting and supporting a, a network of, of practitioners. It's, as I said, a difficult environment and what we've seen in the South African example is um, that the pendulum swings. So 1994 we came out of an era of the apartheid South African police uh, with very little scrutiny and uh, operating essentially at the bid and call of the regime, regime policing pure and simple to its transformation and the establishment of these governance systems um, as for whatever reason the, the political pressure of trying to deal with crime, uh, the changing environment within the culture of police, uh, it's by nature a closed environment and the way in which it kind of falls back on itself in terms of crisis, how that, how that system is undermined. I mean one of the first instances of that undermining was uh, the doing away with the internal affairs unit and at the same time this huge increase in, in distrust and in the way in which the public kind of view the, the police as corrupt or, or potentially corrupt. So as the, uh, the reality of um, the slow pace of service delivery um, started being felt, um, the political mobilizations of communities in terms of um, demanding basic services the, the reactions of the police, you know, in many instances becoming more and more oppressive. Um, I think the, the incidents in, in Marikana just are, are symptom demonstrating the extent to which there's been a polarization between police and community. On top of that, there's been kind of a, a rolling crisis within the police. Uh, we've seen the previous two national commissioners dismissed. Um, and it, and it comes at a very difficult time as well because you know over the last few years we've been um, embarking on this project of mass recruitment and those new recruits coming in at about 5,000 a year um, you know the training the ability of the organization to absorb them uh, the skill and capacity of middle management to mentor them and exercise the appropriate supervision and discipline uh, being demonstrated as as being insufficient so that internal system of, of accountability looking very weak. I mean we have some what, 200 uh, investigators within the Independent Police Investigative Directorate um, and that provides the capacity to oversee 200,000 police officers. A minuscule proportion of uh, disciplined cases actually result in dismissal or prosecution or, or any result for, for the police officer. So we, we, we literally are at a crossroads and um, we, we need to rely on, on all our systems of oversight to make a difference. And when we talk about all those oversight systems, we, we're very mindful of the important role that civilians, the community uh, and, and civil society organizations play. Uh, we've seen in the recent cases like Marikana, for example, like the Mikado incident, uh, the civilian response to uh, video footage of, of these incidents, uh, citizens um, filming those events and putting them on YouTube, making them available to the media, the extent to which that has 
galvanized uh, government and, and the oversight apparatus into action. Uh, in the instance of, of Andres Titani, uh, an activist in the Free State who was um, essentially murdered on camera uh, by police officers firing rubber bullets at him at very short range or close range, being let off. You have to ask questions about how well the National Prosecuting Authority prepared for this case. At the core, the police have a mandate to protect. Uh, they have a mandate to uphold the Constitution. They have a mandate to affect their business within the, the rule of law, uh, that people are innocent and proven guilty. And it's within those rules that, that the police have to operate. And when they operate within those rules, I think we're going to see shifts in terms of how citizens trust the police and are willing to engage with them. If they continue to break those rules, I think we're just going to see uh, a worsening picture of um, distrust and um, an alienation between police and community. And, and certainly that's not going to resolve any of the kind of issues of, of safety and security. Uh, that, that we need to, to tackle here in South Africa today.